Tonight we are at Hyatt Regency Grand Cypress in Orlando and we are dining for the very first time on opening night at Four Flamingos. This is a Richard Blaze Florida kitchen and we are super excited to be here tonight. The menu looks amazing. The restaurant itself is beautiful. We took a little walk around through. There's a nice little bar area. There's actually a few outdoor seatings out at the bar and I love the decor in here. It's a lot of windows which is really nice for lighting and the dark blue and the white is really nice so we wore our best pink outfits tonight <laughs> to go with the flamingo look um, but we have some cocktails coming and we are excited to get started <laughs> to start off tonight with cocktails i went with the ponce punch this is 16 dollars. it is orange infused saint augustine gin liqueur 43 and passion fruit with a sage syrup. And what's really cool is that next to a lot of these ingredients on the menu, you'll see a little star beside that. And what that means is that these ingredients are made in-house here um, at the restaurant. So, you know, with the, with the um, orange infused gin, they're basically getting that gin from St. Augustine Distillery, bringing it in, and then they're infusing it themselves. Um, and then the sage syrup, that's something that they're making here, um, you know, pulling down uh, the sugar or cane sugar, whatever they're using, adding in the sage, getting it all mixed together, letting it cool, bringing it together, adding it to the cocktail. So what's, uh, I think that's really great and an awesome start to the restaurant here, which is absolutely beautiful and is huge. Like space goes on and on and on and on um, all over the place. So we're in a beautiful setting right now. Um, being able to look out the windows, we actually have a great view of where the kitchen's at so we can kind of see them bringing things out and uh, so pretty exciting. But for my cocktail, it's really good. Sweet, get a little bit of that passion fruit in there. Um, the liquor 43, not getting that as much. Um, and what I really love though is the orange infused gin. Um, it adds a little bit more citrusy in um, with your normal kind of like gin feel and taste. So it's a really great cocktail. Um, it's a very dangerous cocktail. Uh, and I'm sure it probably won't be the only one that I get tonight. So we'll see. Like what Josh was saying, they do make a lot of the ingredients for their cocktails in-house. Um, and I think they have a really great signature cocktail list. Whenever I was looking at this, they actually have eight cocktails. Um, that's quite a few, I think, for signature cocktails at a restaurant. And I think it's a great way to be able to start your meal here. And so we're dining at four flamingos. I am having the fifth flamingo for my cocktail. This is Siesta Key Rum, an ingredient I cannot pronounce. Guava, pineapple, and raspberry orge. Orjat? Orge. Orge, or orjat. Um, but that is actually made in house. And this is the perfect pink drink to start my night. And it is absolutely delicious. You can really actually taste the guava and pineapple in there. I think that sometimes guava can be a little overpowering, but I think there is just the right amount in here. And I really love the raspberry flavor that kicks in there too. Um, and I mean, the color of this is my favorite color and it's just amazing. And I love that they top it with a little flamingo in there too. Great way to start. We also have a bread service as well. Um, there's some rolls with salt and I can definitely tell that's whipped butter on this side, but we're excited for this appetizer that should be coming shortly too. What are you looking at? I was just looking back here behind Taylor is the uh, tank full oh. of lobsters. And Chef uh, Blaze back there is uh, standing at the window uh, waiting for some food to come out. So he will not be here all the time, I'm sure, but uh, he's at least here tonight, which is really cool. Boy. <laughs> oh, there's oh, more. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Nice How are you? Hello. Hello. Good. You, you can sit it wherever. Uh, first of all, uh, congratulations on the coordinating of the, uh, the uniforms for tonight. Oh, uh, yes. Yeah, right? Very much appreciate that. It makes me smile. Thank you so much for hanging out with us. Yeah. Good, good to see you. I wanted to wait till you got some food before I came out. Yeah, so we're excited to try it all. Uh, so this is our smorgasbord uh, platter otherwise known as the, uh, uh, the all of the appetizers. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> this is our uh, spicy coconut shrimp toast. So it's a little okay. uh, spicy sweet. We have our um, we have our conch hush puppies. 
are tuna tostones with an avocado tartar sauce and a passion fruit yolk. That's not a, oh, okay. an egg yolk, that's actually wow. passion fruit. Uh, Florida shrimp cocktail with the cocktail sauce that's on the side there. Florida stone crab, which is, I don't know, that's, we put it, we don't usually put those on there. We threw those on there for you. That's like a hundred dollars stone crab. And then we have oh. uh, a dozen uh, uh, Florida oysters with uh, guava, uh, hibiscus pearls. Oh, that's like pearls. awesome. Okay. Awesome. How do you make those? Yeah, so it's a, it's a, it's an ice cream that we oh, make okay. with a hib hibiscus, basically. Yeah. So it's a hibiscus hot sauce ice cream. Okay. And then we dip it in liquid nitrogen. And uh, basically we make homemade, it's homemade dipping Dots. Oh, so, okay. Yeah, that's that's awesome. cool. This is how they make dipping Dots. Yeah. We just happen to do them with funky flavors. Yeah. Cool. And we don't have a machine. We have, we have interns. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much for hanging out with us on our Yeah. Thank night. you so much. How are, how are the cocktails going? Oh, the they cocktails are, are excellent. Phenomenal. Fantastic. Yes. Fantastic. I would like to just state for the record that we were not invited out tonight. Uh, Taylor just happened to see that reservations were open. She uh, was lucky to get one. And then they were kind of in contact with us just a little bit. They, we were not invited out though. Um, with that being said, uh, they did bring us a few things, compliments of uh, the chef, which is absolutely amazing. Thank you guys so much. Um, but the one thing that I wanted, really wanted to try, because it is um, kind of the uh, you know go-to to try a little bit of everything on the menu, is the Smorgasbord platter, uh, which is $125. So this is pretty expensive, but you are getting, um, if I could relate this back to top shelf, uh, you're getting the top shelf stuff. So um, we had the ice cold oysters, which I think uh, our server said it was only supposed to come with half a dozen, um, but they brought us out a dozen. So again, they did give us a little extra. Hush puppies uh, by themselves, I love hush puppies. I think they're amazing. Um, I can eat them all day long. Uh, these were phenomenal. They do sell, uh, send it out with a side of like a honey mustard for you to dip in, but these are seasoned so well. Um, that you really don't need it. Uh, there's some really nice uh, flavors in there, garlic, salt, pepper, um, even almost like a little bit of lime in there as well, all mixed together. And then there's nice big chunks of the conch itself. So really, really good uh, and phenomenal. But I gotta say, the best part about this entire smorgasbord for me were the oysters. Now, uh, unpopular opinion, potentially for those who may watch our channel, and a friend of mine who is Matt, these oysters were hand, hand, like, way better than what we had up in Boston, um, hands down. So, now that is probably more because of how they're prepared. Um, these tasted more like they had the vinegar in there already. But on top of that, if you heard um, Chef Blaze talking about it, they have a, hib a hibiscus hot sauce. Um, what are they called? They're basically like a dipping dots. They're, they're like a dipping dots, but they're hibiscus hot sauce, um, sweet and hot and it is really freaking phenomenal uh i could have eaten all dozen of these oysters you had like nine or ten of them. I, I had almost all of them they were <laughs> so good so if if you're looking at the menu you're like i can't spend 125 dollars on an appetizer you're you're thinking of something that you got to get you like oysters spend the money get the oysters they are hands down uh one of the best things on the menu and they're florida so they're florida fresh so I'll let Taylor talk about the rest. <laughs> I just asked Taylor if she wanted this last oyster. And what did you say? Sorry, there's no oyster because I ate it already. I didn't have room on my plate, so I put it back over there. Josh is really sad. <laughs> and then I said, how disappointing. He loved the oysters. <laughs> I did also enjoy the oysters. I really liked the hibiscus hot sauce on there, but because those were Josh's favorite thing because he loves oysters, I did let him have the majority of them. Um, I pretty much ate everything else um, in addition to what Josh had, but the hush puppies, I actually don't really like hush puppies only because I don't like how doughy they are and normally they don't have much flavor. But like Josh said, these were so full of flavor, seasoned perfectly. There was a ton of the conch in there. They were delicious. The Florida shrimp were huge and they were perfectly tender. The stone crab claws, I love crab and they were like meatier. I know that's like a weird word to say, but they were much more meaty, dense. I guess. They were denser. Den they're a little more dense. 
um, than a regular crab. Like I feel like most times when you go out to eat, you might have like snow crab. Uh, these were amazing. Uh, <laughs> now this is what I'm gonna want every time I go out and wanna have crab for dinner. The tuna toast tones. That is what I was really looking forward to. Uh, it is tuna and then it comes with a passion fruit yolk on top. And so it's not egg, it's passion fruit. They make it into like that yolk shape and then just kind of cut it and it opens up all over everything. So you kind of get that flavor everywhere. I really enjoyed these. They actually, it's not like a tortilla tostada. Uh, they actually use like plantain for that. Really good. There was a nice little bit of saltiness in there, but there was also the nice sweetness from the passion fruit. The coconut shrimp toast. That was really good too. So whenever I think of toast, for some reason I was just imagining like avocado toast in my head. This was nothing like that. Uh, it was very thick, but it had a lot of flavor like layered on top. I love that there was a little bit of crunch on there around the outside too. I told Josh, you know, this is expensive to come and get this, but you are getting a very good variety. You're able to try all these different appetizers. I really could just come back, get a drink at the bar and order this for like the meal <laughs> because it, there was so much on there and it was all so good. The kitchen did also send out the snapper ceviche with key lime and ahi amarillo. The snapper was so perfectly tender, like it basically melted in your mouth. And I loved the flavors of the like ceviche itself. Um, I feel like sometimes ceviche is a little overwhelming with lime. This was not at all. And let me also just say, like, I'm not here to <laughs> critique Chef because I know everything's gonna come out perfect. We're just telling you what we have liked about the food while we have been here. Uh, just to add to tonight's dinner, I got a second cocktail. Uh, I went with the Mango del Fuego, which is jalapeno infused uh, maestro doble tequila. Cointro, mango, hibiscus syrup, which is made in-house. The tequila is made in-house or is infused in-house um, with a grapefruit salt. Um, it comes with, even with a little bendy straw. Cheers. We'll do the straw first. Just give it a little... Oh, Taylor needs a picture. This might be my new favorite place to come for cocktails too. It's good. For my entree tonight, I went with something uh, I've kind of had before, but not really. So I've had swordfish in other places, but I've never had swordfish like this before. This was a swordfish prime rib titled the Neptune's Cut, and it was 16 ounces. Um, it's done black lime, black pepper, and garlic, $65. So um, not the most expensive thing on the menu, but certainly very close to it. And it was, um, it was like legit a steak, which was really cool, and not something that I was really expecting. Um, still uh, tender, pull apart, but you have these nice flavors in there of the, of the lime with the pepper, and then they had uh, almost like a nice, uh, like a butter sauce that kind of went around the outside, and you can kind of take that and dip it into there. It was just phenomenal. I mean totally different on the scale of like seafood you know i think a lot of these places are serving grouper um snapper you know these nice flaky white fish that you can get but here with the swordfish uh being done the way it is prepared the way it is it's just phenomenal and it's a little bit different instead of just getting a prime rib steak or something like that you've got an actual fish steak so it was really cool really great and uh, i am stuffed but we're getting dessert so you know for my entree tonight, I had the Florida Seafood Mokeka. This comes with coconut steamed rice. Basically what this is, is a chia pino, essentially. But this is a Brazilian seafood stew, is what technically mokeka is. There was so much seafood in there. There were clams, mussels, there were two huge scallops in there. There was potatoes. What else, some fish, shrimp. I think I got everything, but it was a huge portion. And then it was served with a side of coconut rice, which is kind of like a sweeter rice, 
Um, I basically just poured that over top because there was so much sauce in there. It just, I had to get it soaked up with that rice and it was absolutely delicious. I was a little skeptical of coconut rice only because I don't really like coconut or like a sweeter rice. However, the flavors of this dish were absolutely amazing. So for somebody that doesn't like coconut, I thoroughly enjoyed this. All of the seafood was perfectly cooked, nice and tender. And let me just say, it is such a huge portion, I am taking the majority of it home because there is no way I ever would have finished that and would have been able to enjoy dessert. For dessert tonight, which you guys know I don't normally go with dessert, but I figured we would try it first night here. Uh, I chose the coconut uzu cake. And uh, the best way for me to, to kind of describe this for you guys is that it is very similar to like a strawberry shortcake, except no strawberries, obviously. Um, and the uzu is not lemon flavored, but it's a strong citrus flavor. And it's really good. And uh, actually, there's almost no coconut in there. The coconut uh, is actually the shavings on the side. So you can kind of avoid most of that if, um, if you so choose, but really fantastic. But yeah, the, the bread is um, very much like a shortcake. And it's really good, two different layers. Um, with like the uh, marshmallow like whipped cream in between, and uh, I, I don't know, I like it. It's good. I love the uzu because I love that citrus flavor. It's uh, nice and strong, which I prefer. So it's good. For my dessert tonight, I had the chocolate banana caviar. This is served with a chocolate sphere, vanilla bean, and a banana ganache. This is not what I was expecting at all, but. It is amazing. I really don't know what I was expecting, but whenever it came out, I was just really surprised that there was this nice big chocolate sphere there. And then basically what you would call like the caviar part is like these little chocolate pearls or caviar on the bottom. What I really like about this dish is there are so many different textures, not too many, but different textures and it's, they all just go so well together. You have the nice hard chocolate of the sphere, which you basically break that open and then all of the goodness is inside. The little chocolate caviar have a really nice like softer texture. And then with the, the cream that's in there, the vanilla bean, and then the banana ganache is amazing. There is a really nice flavor of banana, not too much, not too subtle, it's like, perfect and get a bite of just everything together this is absolutely delicious all right so we just finished eating inside at four flamingos yes uh and it was amazing it was seriously amazing so if you don't know who chef richard blaze is he was actually a top chef the top yeah. chef so um really awesome to be able to come to his restaurant and dine here and actually meet him in person that yeah. was that was probably a highlight of the night. I did not even know that was going to happen. So uh, really cool. We got to experience that. And I mean, the food was absolutely food was, uh, amazing. Fantastic. The service was excellent. Like overall, just a wonderful night out. Yeah. Um, if you are staying here or at a hotel close by, definitely an easy Lyft or Uber ride to get over here mm -hmm. and, you know, spend the evening in the restaurant and yeah. check out the hotel and just... Enjoy good. yourself. Yeah, I'm so glad we got to come over so, here. So overall, um, we Taylor had one cocktail. I had two cocktails. Um, we had the Schmorgersborg mm -hmm. appetizer. Uh, we had I had a coffee, and then Taylor had an entree. I had an entree. Mm -hmm. And we both had a dessert. And a dessert. Both of us had dessert. In total, um, three hundred and twenty-five dollars. So again, yes. didn't include um, the two kind of add-on appetizers that they gave us yes um at the beginning and uh, again once again thank you guys so much for that oh yes um, but you could easily yeah. not spend that much money yes. coming here to eat. we got the smorgasbord appetizer and that's what really yeah. you know kind of racked our bill up so if you don't get the huge tower appetizer and you just get like one or two other appetizers to share, yep. um, you won't be spending as much money. So we just like to be able to give you a variety whenever we come to our dining review. So um, yeah. it was very enjoyable, <laughs> but we hope you got to see, you know, what all the restaurant offers as far as many of the appetizers and, and entrees. Now, with that being said, though, we kind of gave you guys like a, a quick kind of overview of what it was. 
Um, the menu is actually going to change uh, quite yes. a bit um, all the time, seasonally, yes. with what's available. So keep that in mind. What we got might not be something that you can get. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's not because they made it specifically for us because we were here. Um, it's just because the menu is going to change periodically yes. with the season. So Which really is good. awesome. That gives you more reason to come back to yeah. a restaurant. It's fresh. We love that. Yes. Yep. And it gives the chefs, I think, a little bit more uh, leeway to kind of create stuff for themselves. You know? Yes. So it's something cool. unique, something different. Yeah. Uh, not something that you can get at every restaurant. Yeah. So oh, that was an amazing meal. But let us know. This is opening night, so I know probably nobody has been here yet. True. So let us know if you plan on coming to Four Flamingos, a Richard Blaze Florida kitchen at the Hyatt Regency Grand Cypress.